May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio Podcast. I'm DC Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, preserving the legacy of Shunyu Suzuki and those whose past crossed his and anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free of economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Today is, and anything else that comes to mind, uh, it's the one day a week we take a respite from all that Zen nonsense and have another episode of Life in Bali. So this episode of Life in Bali is entitled, Yeah, How Katrinka Came to Be Able to Get Her Toe Wet Again the First Day We Get to Seminyak. So uh, what's been happening? I don't have a guest again. Too time-consuming. One of these days I'll catch up with my imagined uh, important uh, plans to complete certain things. Um, but, um, oh, well, I did. I did uh, do a phone chat this morning, but I'm not going to put it up on Saturday. It was a Zen one, and it's good. But I think I might do some um, some phone chats, but and but not prepare them to go up because there's just too much happening, and it's just really hard for me to get anything done. I like, all right. Now this week, my number one goal, sort of, was to get through Chapter 15 of Crooked Cucumber. Get through it. By that, I mean get the uh, audio file, which was done a while back. Get it um, updated, upgraded. uh, Get the uh, transcript for that chapter updated and get the file for the changes from the original book to this second edition the changes all itemized because since there will not be a second edition, I want to do a, a book or something on cuke.com or something called Notes on Crooked Cucumber. And my idea is that uh, there'd be, a, mm, I guess, a uh, an appendix with all the changes. It's going to be long. I'll tell you, it's going to be, God, is it, I don't know. It's going to be long. There's a lot of changes. Uh, a lot of little ones, a lot of medium-sized ones. Nothing too big, no. Uh, but and it'll be sort of neat. I'll comment on it uh, here and there. Uh, and maybe I'll do an audio book. No, it's on Crooked Cucumber, right? So anyway, I'm working on that. So all I have to do first is look at Bill Redigan's notes. He went over the audio book that I read as part of a podcast. And he looked at uh, the transcript the uh, updated transcript, and he's, you know, to see if I had read it accurately. And he found a lot of places where I'd say the wrong word or skip a word or skip a sentence or say a sentence twice. Uh, You know, I'm barely holding on (laughs) in my feeble old age. (laughs) So anyway, and, um, and at the same time, he checked the book, second uh, printing, uh, because there were a number of changes from the first printing to the second printing. Uh, the first printing was hardback, right? Second printing went into paperback. Uh, n- not too many, and none of them could change the page count. But uh, anyway, so uh, the, going over that and, and then making that file that shows every change and making sure the audio is right and the transcript's right – uh, even though the audiobook is the goal, it's the important one. I, the, 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 because I have, you know, it's going to be published. It's going to be available. I should get it done as soon as possible. But I have to do this all at the same time. It's not going to work any other way. Because I'm thinking of it, it's all complicated. There's like a million balls juggling in there. All right? So that's it. So my idea is is go through that, get it all ready. And when it's all ready, 
Then I listened to the whole audio while looking at the transcript because I find things he didn't find. And, uh, you know, every time you go over it and find things, find new errata in the book. <laughs> but, uh, all right, I do that. And then when I'm, after I've done that, then uh, I just listen to the audio without reading. And I fix all the little glitches in it that I can and get it in order. And then the next thing is to go make the corrections on the audio. And there'll be a number of them, right? Uh, and um, I haven't been making the corrections for a while because the studio here uh, got torn apart and uh, because of working on the new uh, family room, and which I'm, I'm going to call it the family room and Katrinka's son room. Uh, so that's all done now. And uh, this week, so, so, well, let me finish what I was saying. So my idea was this week to get through that, and then I think, well, I can get through 15 and chapter 16. I haven't even started. It's Thursday. I haven't even started recording yet on 15. I mean, I'll get, I'll, I'll get, you know, I'll be at work for 15 minutes, and then something will come up. I have to get up. And there's been all sorts of people who are working and doing things uh, in the last minute. Uh, so, uh you know, little tweaks and changes and fixes from the work that was done and just other things happening, you know, just um, so. Uh, but I, I, I'm sure I will, I will get it all done by the, the time the weekend's over. I've got to do at least one chapter a week. God. All right. So that's happening. Uh, and <laughs> so, all right, here's something else. Um so the Cardino, who did this work, the contractor, who we've known since we first came here before, because he, he worked for our last landlord, who did not appreciate him as much as we do. Uh, but that guy had been, he's English, he'd been here for 25 years. So he was so jaded and used to the prices from 25 years ago. He thought Cardino, you know, back then asking for like $11 a day, working from eight to five was just outrageous. Um, I got Cardino to increase it to like more like $14 a day. I told him, don't charge boule, white people that much. Come on, up your prices, man. Um, and we've gotten pretty close. He's a neat old guy, probably younger than me, from uh, Java. All, all the people who do that sort of work are from Java. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, so he's he's very competent in terms of, of building – the the um, the new addition, you know, it's uh, like we had to take everything out of our bedroom because it went above the bedroom because there was no second f floor anything above our bedroom. So the, the walls in our bedroom had to be reinforced to hold the second floor. And the whole ceiling and everything came out, right? And the roof and everything above it, which was just, it was an asbestos roof. It was hidden. The rest of the roof's was tile. Uh, so, uh, mm. so uh, uh, that was done, and you know, the the room above it was put in. It's it's the cheapest construction you can possibly do here. It's cinder block, uh, aluminum roof. It it's it can't be seen. It's sort of hidden, uh, and um, but the job was done. Uh, first, he he said thirty million, which is like. $2,100. Ah, you'll never do it for that little. Uh, so after uh, after a few days, I got Fami, uh, Fami uh, the architect who advised uh, one day, just came in and looked, looked at it with me and then Cardino first day. We, you know, talked for about two hours and Fami got a piece of paper and scribbled some stuff and we came to agreements. And then after a few days, I got him back on the phone with Fami. We got some more agreements, and we upped it to forty million. That's twenty eight hundred for the whole thing. And uh, Fami said, "Now he should just do that. He gets forty million. That's it. That's for labor and materials." Um, but that's not the way it is with him. It's really. I mean, he says he. The way I see it is, he hopes it'll come in for forty million, but he wants to get paid for what he does, and basically, it's time and materials. You know, I'm not going to, uh, 
you know, it's like him and his extended family working, and they're super concentrated. They're super concentrated. They're super efficient. So this job was done without a contract, without plans, and without permits. And he came in at $40 million. It was really great. And they did a ton of other stuff. They painted the house. I mean, not everything, but everything that needed to be painted quite a bit. And we're very, uh, very exacting about it, you know, sanding any place that needed to be sanded and preparing it and, and doing some cement work out in front of the house and uh, uh, and inside the courtyard and all sorts of little things they did, you know. Uh, and it wasn't like they did it for free. It's just at the end of the week, he'd give me a labor bill and, you know, as it was going, he'd ask for money for materials. So when it was all over, he gave me all, he had this big stack of receipts. I said, yeah, I can keep them, but let's just deal with totals. I said, I'll never look at them. Uh, so we just looked at the total, and it came, it came to the total for what he wanted. came to $40 million. It was amazing. <laughs> and I swear, he didn't, it seemed to me like he didn't change the total to comply to the forty million, I mean, it was like paying for everything we bought, plus the time that they worked, and and the, the labor is the materials. I'd say are are cheaper than in America, and it's a lot simpler system without uh, these price gouging big corporations or whatever is happening in America. I don't know. Um, it's all pretty. You know, I know the people who own the place where we get materials. Uh, things are a little more personal. And, all right, so, and, all the, and the labor adds up. Now, what's the labor? The labor's like, it's like, there'll be, there was, all right, there was leave it like six people working here, eight to eight in the morning to five in the afternoon. They work, you know, they take, you know, they take an hour off for lunch. Uh, and uh, And they just eat right here, just sitting on, you know, or sometimes they'll go down the street. The labor would be for for that was um, like two hundred and eighty dollars for the week, six days. And and Cardino, he's the contractor, right? He'd be taking seventy dollars for the week. So that is one good reason to live here. They have really good. He's a really good, honest person. I never have to worry about any dishonesty with him. That's why I say I'll pay him whatever he asks. Uh, but anyway, he came in right, right on, and he said he asked for an additional million. I said, "No trouble." <laughs> That's seventy dollars. Um, so, uh, and that was important because we don't have much money. I mean, we we we're we're always like just have enough money for a certain number of months ahead, uh, and uh, you know, think about where we're going to be getting the next. Katrina doesn't like me to talk about that. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, when, you know, when you don't have uh, a big development department with professional fundraisers going out and say a nice big structure, maybe a, a buildings and things that are impressive. Uh, and it, it's, People don't necessarily want to give to you. They want to give to things that look really established, that have very high overheads, where things cost things that we would do for $1,000, they'll do for $20,000. Um, so uh, anyway, that's just the way it is. I understand it's nothing new. Uh, uh, but it's nice being independent. So all right, he did that. And, and uh, we were relating constantly through the whole thing. You know, I was living here. So um, uh, then uh, there, there is one problem with that. Uh, his, son, his son came back and has been doing little things like getting the studio together. There is material now. We went out with Nyoma and our, our Bemo driver yesterday and got a, a bolt of, what do you call it, a bolt of material? You know, a roll of maroon. That's what they called it, too, maroon. Uh, and it's on the ceiling here, sort of not 
attached right to it, a little, you know, running, hanging a little. Uh, and uh, that we took curtains that uh, Katrinka replaced the curtains. So there's curtains hanging on the wall. Uh, there's material beautiful uh, uh, from Flores, um, what do they call it, ecot. Ecot just means to tie. So I guess it's a way they make it that tie things. Uh, so almost all the wall is covered in material. And um, so I, I need to, you, don't, you want room sound. You don't want it to be totally a dead studio, but you don't want too much room sound. So I'm, I'm tweaking it now. I'm going to listen to how this sounds. This is the first recording I've done it. It's all back together. The bed is out. You know, they had a bed in here. They had, we had a bed in here. And um, uh, so I was sitting on the edge of a bed that took up most of the room. It's a very small room. It's great for a studio there. It just has two little windows up top and it's on the second floor in a corner, you know, and it was like the guest bedroom. So like when family came, they had this little tiny room here. And it's, it was, it's so small, you can't, you, you could only get into the bed from one side. Uh, so now this settee that was in the, the bigger room upstairs down there, which is now opening up into the, the family room, the settee is against the back wall here. So I can sit on it. And uh, so I'm sitting, you know, with my legs crossed on it on a little cushion with a nice table. And then I can bring my desk from in there, in here. So it's opened up this whole room. And then it's made it where I'm not totally dominating the second floor like I was. Now I only have my two rooms, the one where I get my clothes and office stuff, tons of it. Well, I don't even <laughs> always need to go through. I need an organizer. Uh and uh, uh, so, anyway, this is great, right? So, uh, Fami Cardino's son was here helping me do this. And, you know, doing little things with curtains so that they hang right and everything works. Just little things. But the one problem in the job, I said, Fami, we're very happy with everything. But there's one problem. Is that there in, in the family room, Katrina's son room, there are... Opening windows on the left, which are the old opening windows before the room was there. They're big. And, and uh, they, they, open by, they open out, uh, and, and there's screen doors that open to the sides. They're really big. They're like, I don't know, like two feet wide and maybe even more than two feet wide. Yeah, and, you know, like two and a half feet tall. Uh, and then on the other side, there's there's French doors going out to a porch, which is new. It's so nice to have out there on the back. And um, two windows there that th they open and they have screens. We screen everything. Not everybody here does. But Katrinka almost died from dengue a couple of years ago. And, and we had screens before that. We've always been screen freaks. Uh, but um, – and mainly the, – the, the, the thing with mosquitoes is mainly at dawn and dusk, you know, around there. There are not many mosquitoes because they kill everything, but uh, I just don't want to get one of the bad ones. Uh, and uh, so, and there's French doors there. There's French doors in the side leading into the room. It can be closed off. But there's two l long fixed windows up top. They're going the long way of the room. And Cardino and I were talking about the thickness, and I said, yeah, let's make them thick. Let's make them strong. And, you know, if they break, you know. So he said he was going to get it where they they uh, put two panes together. I said, oh, man, you can get things in between in there. Like, and he said, no, don't worry. I said he can get humidity and stuff. He said, no, no, no problem. Well, there is a problem because... I thought they just hadn't cleaned the windows well enough. I said, well, try to clean them again, you know. And then I didn't want to insult him, so our gardener said he'd do it. So, but then he didn't do a good drink. He just thinks he didn't do a good enough job. So today, Fami and I, not Fami, fairy, one on each side with like Windex type thing, right? And uh, clean the windows. Nope. 
they are dirty on the inside. Like they, uh, they sort of looks like somebody washed them just in a few places here or there uh, with a, a sort of dirty water or something. You, you know, it's like a film is there. Wasn't right. And one, one place there's a little, little black specks. So they got windows that were dirty and put them up and installed them. And there's cement on both sides, you know, and they could take it out. And it probably cost, you know, and if, if it's replaced, I'm going to have to pay for it. It's not like America, you know, where you're paying a zillion dollars to everybody. It's uh, they don't have any extra money, you know. Our, our electrician, I gave him a pair of shoes to go back to Java for a uh, uh, for a uh, Eid al-Fitri, or, you know, one of the Muslim big days. Uh, so uh, we're just going to have to pay for it again if we replace them. But it's not that bad. It's sort of on the edge. So. Fami and I clean them. We got them a little cleaner, but still there's all this stuff in between. So Katrina's going to get some sort of light lace curtains in front of them. They're only about a foot high, you know, and it'll be all right. It'll be all right. We give, it, we give up on that, you know. Uh, so anyway, that's what's happening in the construction world. And Mudik, oh, oh no, I got to tell you about Mudik. Mudik, I've also, I've known him for maybe seven years, at least six years. Because he was coming into our old house, too. There was another guy doing, uh, uh, for the landlord, that was doing any electrical plumbing stuff. And the landlord did a lot. But we had a problem with uh, our, we bought a refrigerator, an old refrigerator. We bought it. And it would start dripping on the inside and stuff. It needed to be cleaned somewhere. So he brought in Mudik. And that's how we met Mudik. And after that, we hired Mudik to do anything electrical or, or uh plumbing. And we used Mudik when we moved here. And there's been a lot of stuff come up. through. We've been here three and a half years. And we take care of all the problems here. Uh, the landlord is supposed to, electrical and plumbing and everything. We take care of all of them. Uh, why? Even though the contract, and I, I did the contract in Indonesian with the landlord, even though the contract says he's responsible for all of it, we take care of all of it. And I show him. And he loves us. But why do I do that? Because we have greatly improved the, the value of this home. And he has not raised our rent in three and a half years, and he likes having us here. And our rent is very low. It could go for a lot more. Uh, so uh, it looks generous and foolish of me to do that, but it's not. It's practical. And uh, frankly, we just get along great with the landlord and his family. We're very close. He said, uh, oh, but I want to tell you this about Mudik, right? So <laughs> Mudik, like everybody else, Nyoman, our driver, if he goes out and buys something for us, and, and he's always doing that, our cadet, the housekeeper, if she buys something for him, our Cardino, any of them, they immediately bring you receipts, and look, you show you, you know, it's like somebody, it's something everybody has instilled in them here. You show the receipt, you look at, you know, there, there's, it's, it's always done except with Moody. And I would say, I can't tell you how many times I said to Moody, Moody, there's no note, nota, you know, uh, it sounds Spanish, no, no, it sounds Italian, nota, no, it's nota, we said, or, you know, bill, or, I mean, we always say no to. Uh, there's no receipts. What is, oh, yeah, I left it at home. Oh, it's in the briefcase. Oh, you had to bring it. Oh, you to, well, do you really need? Um, here, I can make some. You know, and same thing here. It was eight and a half million. It was six hundred dollars. You know, uh, <laughs> for all the stuff they they were constantly here. You know, uh, he and he and his mm, cousin or something, Tofik. Uh, uh, they were here a lot over that six weeks. They were doing all sorts of stuff. They had to be taking things out, putting them back in, rewiring. Uh, and then, then there'd be other stuff. They were here a lot. They cleaned every fan. We have 14 fans. We have nine ceiling fans. They cleaned. They took them down and ground all the uh, rust off them, you know, and and repainted them. And they did tons of stuff. And it was all this stuff we bought. And so, you know, the air conditioner, he said it was $5 million, right? 
You'd be, that's, you know, $350. Uh, and uh, bought a new ceiling fan, uh, you know. So at the end, he, he said, well, uh, let's see, uh, no doubt. He said, well, how about I just give you a sheet of paper that, that itemizes it and tells you what it's all? <laughs> I said, but Ding, why do you keep doing this? Why don't you bring me receipts? Everybody else does. And then that night I was lying there and I realized, oh, he buys stolen goods. It has to be that. I don't think these guys would be, I can't see them stealing the goods. But of course, it has to be something like that. Or he buys from, uh, uh, you know, bankruptcy sales or something. Uh, and But let me tell you something. I've checked up on things. Like he put in a new Toto toilet for us. And I checked on line on the cost of it. And it was significantly cheaper coming from Houdin. So I think I understand what's happening now. <laughs> so I was a little shocked at his labor bill. It was $4 million. Now, like, but think of that. $4 million, three guys, here, a great deal over a period of six weeks. That's four times that, $280. <laughs> but I was, you know, I was, you know, you get used to it. And I was like, God, that's a lot. But um, anyway, I, I want to tell you something. This is not necessarily duplicable. I have good relationships with these guys. I don't know what I would do without them. I'm happy to give them anything they ask for. I, I, you know, and other people who've lived here longer come to me and ask me for who can I get to do this and that. Uh, I don't think they're necessarily representative. Uh, you know, uh, I, th I think they might. Uh, I think it might be hard to duplicate what we get from them. So anyway, all right. So that's that, right? So then our landlord says. Um, that, uh, you know, he was coming by quite a bit. I mean, he hangs out two houses away at his son's place. He and his brother own this house, two brothers own this whole street. Uh, and uh, he says, when it's done, we should do a ceremony. So it was done. And so I told Kadek, our housekeeper, and I asked him, should I invite people? He said, no, just us. But Kadek has to be here. And... Uh, so we arranged for, for this Monday at 10 o'clock, and it was a full moon day, so they were already doing a ceremony in their home, uh, in uh, a family ceremony at the family temple. Uh, and um, so he, he showed up here in his formal sort of, what would you call it, um, spiritual garb, you know, like white with white headband and... Uh, you know, a white sarong, and uh, always his his mask below his chin, <laughs> and um, and then he said he had to wait for his son to come. His son was coming to join him. He has three sons, and this is a cadet, uh, his son cadet, and uh, uh, so um, and um, um, our cadet. Uh, who's our, our housekeeper came, and she brought. Uh, uh, offerings, you know. She brings his offerings every time she comes, but extra offerings. Uh, and she and Katrinka went to the um, shrine in front of the house and made offerings. They went to our shrine in the kitchen and made offerings. She fixed up a little shrine upstairs, not in the new room, but right outside with the French doors wide open. So we're sitting right in front of it wide open. And we sit on the floor there on little cushions and and his son was also dressed up, and I'm in a sarong with uh, a nice shirt uh, and a, a sort of a flowery, you know, type shirt, and with a thing called a dung, which is a headpiece, and uh, and we have a little ceremony, and it's just like, uh, uh, oh, he put it, he, he oh he, he took his uh, smartphone. And a little tiny speaker, like an inch and a half high, and and had it playing, uh, like, you know, holy music, 
It's really cool stuff, you know? Like, hmm, I don't know what it was. I don't know how to describe it. But it's nice, nice. Like Indonesian, cool Indonesian, you know, traditional music. So that was playing. And uh, uh, we're sitting there, and then uh, the big sticks of incense. And we, But we don't get up. Only his son gets up and goes to our little altar, which is just a little, like, basket with some stuff in it, you know. Uh, low sort of basket with, you know, like fruit and palm leaves and flowers and I don't know what, you know, stuff like that. And he puts it up there. And then there's this yellow coconut, which is mm, smaller than a football. Well, way smaller than a football. Uh, like so if you cupped your hands together, you could you could get, get them around it. And, and using a small coconut like that, special type of coconut, is done in these ceremonies. Then he opens it, and and he he uh, takes there's coconut water, and he takes it and he throws it out. You know that's done every well, that's done in uh, in Christian ceremonies and Asian ceremonies all over. You know Hindu, Buddhist throwing water. So he throws water on her head. Suzuki Rush used to do it. Throw water on her head in the ceremonies uh, in ordinations. So he throws water. Uh, well, coconut water uh, throws a little in the new room and then uh, pours a little in her hand. So three times. Just pour a little tiny bit and then you sip it. Three, two, three. And then the fourth time you put it on your face. Wipe, wipe your face. Uh, it's also done with just regular water like in temples. And uh, then we sat there a while and that was it. That's the end of the ceremony. It's so nice. It's so minimal. And that purified and welcomed the new room. So that's uh, what was happening this week. So one other thing I must tell you <laughs> is that Katrinka was at a salon to get, I don't know, Katrinka gets her hair done. I, mean, you know, I can't tell you how many times I tell you how beautiful she is with natural hair, like it would just go swimming in the ocean and just leave it like that and do nothing. Because it's expensive. It's not expensive like America, but it's expensive for hair. But, and and I really do like it when it's just natural. When you, you know, when she was in America and the COVID thing was new and everybody was just staying home, terrified, <laughs> and uh, uh then her hair did get natural, and I would just constantly tell her how beautiful it was, but it didn't work. Um, so anyway, she was at the salon to get, you know, manicure, pedicure, hair done and everything. And she was sitting there waiting, and it was like only her. Uh, maybe there was one other customer who was waiting for somebody. But she had her foot under a stool, some sort of low stool. I don't quite understand what happened. But when the person came out to tell her it was okay and help her, they picked that stool up, and somehow— tore her toenail off. Now, I don't know, right? I, I don't understand what happened, so I can't describe it. But it literally tore the toenail off of her big toe. Um, and uh, Glow, this is at Glow. It's like a 20-minute walk from here. It's right next door to Gopa, which is this nice little clinic with a real doctor there, a Dr. Krishna. Uh, or if he's not there, Dr. Krishna will be there. There's two Dr. Krishnas. Um, and, uh, you know, they have a little tiny pharmacy, very, very small. and But it's very nice. In modern, there's a, a dentist upstairs. Uh, and they're a really good place to go to if it's something simple. Um, and, uh, you know, just much much easier than going to the hospital now, which is very easy to go to, but, I mean, for a hospital. But uh, anyway, so she went next door, and he fixed it, and he wrapped it up, and she came back and got her stuff done. They did not, not only did they not take responsibility for what happened to her, uh, they didn't give her any benefits. Uh, sometimes, she said, they always give her some sort of gift card, this one was not a particularly good gift card. It wasn't something she really wanted. They didn't offer to pay for the medical. They didn't offer to pay for anything. 
I say that is something. But she didn't complain because she knows they're just barely in business. But also she said really what happened is she didn't complain. She didn't want to implicate the um, salon staff person that did that uh, because it might get her in trouble or something. So uh, anyway, so she's been sort of hobbling. And then, he, and then of course, when you get something like that, they tell, you, they tell you don't get it wet. Well, we're getting the house uh, treated for termites on, and they're coming Tuesday. It's coming Tuesday, and we're going off to Seminyak, which now, due to the COVID thing, you can stay in a nice hotel on the beach in Seminyak, which is a great beach to play in. It's really good. I like our beach best because it's a swimming beach, and there's not many people here or anything. Not, you know, it's very nice. But Seminyak's more, you know, with waves that you can play in and stuff like that. And, um, and it'll just be fun to get away. We haven't gotten away anywhere in a long time. Uh, happy air or something. I don't know. Have we been anywhere? I like, went to Ubud one day. Uh, well, mainly we're here. We walked down to the beach. So we're going to be out of the house for four days, and Cadet's going to make sure it's taken care of and lock it up when they're through. They're going to have to cover everything in the house. They're going to drill holes all around the inside and then inject poison into it in the ground. I hate to do it, but the house is going to fall down if we don't because this is this is a termite city. And then they spray upstairs in the attic, which is, you know, the woodwork. And then you're supposed to stay away for two days, so we're staying away for three days. So we're going to be over there. And um, uh, so... It's interesting, we had changed it from doing it Saturday, and it was perfect because by Tuesday, she'll be able to get her toe wet again. So uh, this is this story. Uh, this has been the story of how uh, Katrinka can get her toe wet again. This has been a... Uh, Cuke Audio podcast of life in Bali. And I'm DC Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives. Coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Dog at Bandita, Feline Cujita, and Dear Lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.